guys, and today I'm going to be doing a video on how to vectorize images in Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. This is a part of the series of Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. If you didn't see part one of how to use it on the iPad, please go watch that video. I'll put it up in a card right up there so you guys can go watch the video. Alright guys, so... This is about how to vectorize images and stuff, and for this tutorial, I'm going to be doing a Triceratops, because that's what I have in my photos to be vectorized. Now, first, we're just going to go to Adobe Illustrator, and then, I, as always, I don't like to have my projects, because I want, if you want, you may want a project reveal, so I'm just leaving them pixeled out so you can't see them. Anyway, guys, um... Just to give you a preview, this is what it should look like at the end. I already made the vector so that for this tutorial, I could do and try and do similar. It won't look exactly like this, but it'll look fairly, fairly close. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright guys, so the first thing that we're going to do is go and import our Triceratops image. So we press this picture button. Um, as you guys should know, from part one, you should have known about the whole toolbar over here. So, if you didn't watch part one, again, go watch that first, and part two, and part three. And, if you don't want to watch those, you're just trying to look at how to vectorize something, well then, stay here for this video. So, first, we want to go to our photos, because press this picture button, go to photos, because that's where I have my triceratops. And then you go to the image you want. Say, this is the one I actually want. Okay, and so, um, this is something I just got from online to show you guys how to do this. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so first, you have to go to layer, and then you'll see this layer 1, and you'll have an image in it. Now, you want to make a new layer so you're not making stuff on top of or inside of it because we want we may occasionally want to make this invisible so we can see what we've done so far and make it see how much identical it looks to the image so we made a new layer and now it has nothing in it because we have to start drawing so we're going to be using the pencil tool for this because it has like an editable editable path that we can use very well so I'm just going to uh, get my stylus so I can see, or uh, so I can draw this with you guys. So first, um, I'm gonna do that, and then use the pencil tool. By the way, we have to disable stroke. Um, so we just press this, and then go on the second thing, and go to black because that's the stroke we want. And we select the thing with the selection tool, or select the stroke, and change the stroke width to however you like. I personally want it a little thick, so I'll go for 14 PT, and then I will delete it. Or I will delete the stroke. So, now it will save that, and we'll go to your pencil, and we'll start drawing along everything on the head. Um... And then we'll just draw like that. Um, try and keep your hand steady if you're using a stylus. If you're just using your fingers, well, then that's fine, too. Just be careful, because um, fingers are thicker than stylus. All right, so as you can see, we drew an outline of a head of the head. If we make this invisible, you can see it looks very much like a triceratops head, just without any detail. So... <laughs> We're going to make some more adjustments to this. First, we have to make the image visible. And now we have to go to direct selection. Before we do that, we get the pen tool and just put another uh, section in our thing. So it's more editable or editable. Um, that sounds weird. But yeah, we'll do that and we'll just adjust this and if, if you find any corners at certain places just double tap them to make them um to make them like curvy so that they're actually uh more curve like and that can make it a little better actually 
Um, and so, yeah, we can just edit this a little more. You have to get in pretty close, and you see the actual pixels of this image. But, um, we go here and just nudge all that over. And we can see that we have more of a shape of the horns. Uh, now there's another just random corner over here. That's where we joined the um, last part of the stroke. So you simply just double tap it to make it curvy again. And then we'll just adjust it to what we need. Um, and so... We adjust it like that. Now you can see that we have more of that line. Oh, we have a random corner here too. Just double tap and do that. Um, all right, guys. So as you can see, without the image visible, you can see this looks much smoother and better. <laughs> Then, originally, because we went into the direct selection and edited all of it to make it look a little bit better. Now, how I drew my triceratops vector, I didn't do it this process. I actually did the body and stuff first. But this is going to look close, and if not, even better than that, um, to what I showed you earlier in the video. So, we'll just use the pen tool and... Oh, messed up. All right, so use the pen tool and put dots on the line to make this more editable. And so we'll tap on the line. And now this is a lot more editable. Editable. <laughs> I'm not used to saying that word. So um, we'll make this a lot more editable. Editable. Not edible. Um, sorry guys. And I'm sorry I have to say that a lot. But, yeah, we're just going to follow, like, the crown of the Triceratops head, uh, the head or whatever. So, we're just going to kind of go and yeah. Um, and so, you know, just put some more pen on there. The pen tool can help actually make your stuff more editable um if you guys want to fast forward to when all this is done as i recommend you won't um i'll put a subtitle that will show uh what timestamp to go to so that you can skip this if you really want to so um yeah guys that is we what we have to keep doing it's not the end of the video here just gotta keep editing this um but yeah, go to the timestamp if you want to skip this. So, we'll just, um, yeah, yeah, see? It's making me wrong. We saw these weird curves in the middle of stuff. But, as you can see, it's starting to look a lot more bumpy and realistic, like the actual crown of the head. So we're going to keep... Doing all that. And the reason why I can do a lot of this without looking at reference images while doing it, because one, we already have the image right here that we're basically tracing over and vectorizing. But second, if I can just, if I freehand draw something, I can do it without um, a lot of reference images because I know a lot of like the structure of the dinosaurs. And that can actually really help guys if you know structure and how the bones are aligned and stuff of the animal that you're working on to draw it can really help um so that you don't have to look at as much reference images but while well, vectorizing we already have the image right here so you can keep we can look at it non-stop and it can still be perfectly fine or whatever so yeah um that is that for the head we got as far as we were gonna get with the crown stuff um I mean, you personally could go a little further, but this is all I'm going to do. I think this is actually as far as you can go. Um, so, yeah, that's the head and stuff.
So, yeah, we have that done. Or at least the outline so that um, we can start doing inline details, but not just yet. You still have to do the body and the tail, of course. So, we're going to trace that too. First, go to the pencil tool. And then, just do that. And outline smoothly and carefully. And then, keep outlining very smooth, carefully, so that, uh... You don't get any mess up. So direct selection, if you do a mess up or something, you can always fix it. But I like to not make mess ups at the start, just so that I could have better results later. And also not have to do as much editing, even though I still do a lot of editing. Either way, if I make a bad miss in the drawing, or I don't. So, um, I'm just saying that because I can save you some time, or whatever. So we just keep drawing up there and go with these outlines. It's very dark over here and we're using dark pencil, but it's it's very useful to do that. Uh, just outline stuff um, very carefully. So if you make a big mess up, you might just have to make the line over again because instead of using the pen tool to make every single dot on the line, everything, it can just be like... <laughs> Uh, like, see, we made a small mess up over here. We just have to basically turn it into a curve so that it's easier to edit. And then we can just go over here and curve it the right way. Now, you see, we shouldn't have needed to do all that. But because we made a specific mistake, that should not have happened. So, um, I normally sometimes would just draw the line over, but if since it's one big line, it's just like you might as well um, just try and be careful because you may have to draw something over. And I see I tried to join something together. You just make you could just get rid of one of these zigzags or whatever. So see, this is a perfect place. You press this join button and it'll join the path, the paths together. And so, and you just keep using direct selection, and uh, keep drawing. I'm just going to speed this process up so that you guys don't get bored. You have to scale them up. I think you should just look for a model and then do a lot of scripting if you just want the car because. Well, I don't want the car to be driving. Yeah, I know. So you can just get rid of all the scripts inside of it, and everything. So that and besides the model, so that um. Can I get Alright guys, so I sped this process up, uh, it didn't take that much longer, but as you can see we have multiple paths, and it's like weird, like see we have this one next to this one, well, we have to join those, so basically what we go and do is go to direct selection, we do like last time, but see we have a random corner, we just want to get rid of any of those that we see, because we can make our uh, lines and stuff look pretty messy and not so good. So, we just want to get rid of any of those corners like that. And see, we have that corner over there. Well, we want to hold this shortcut that I went over in part 3. If you do not watch part 3, please go and go. If you want to know the touch shortcuts, go to part 3. Anyway, use the touch shortcut and multi-select those paths. And then, what you want to do, though, is you want to be careful and, like... Not Try not to move the whole thing, but try and move the corners and stuff back enough so that they can be joined. Um, because it can be to the point where like they're too far and they can't be joined properly or whatever. So you just go here and select the both of the path 
and so you just go here and select two and if you can't join them it's just not letting you well then just try and make them close together and uh make them look like they're joined because i mean you can get rid of points on the line so you can just do that um so if we just select this and select this um let's see it looks kind of weird just pull that in mm, hold on I'm gonna speed this process up for you guys so you don't get bored. <laughs> All right, guys. So as you can see, I I couldn't actually join them, but I made it as close as possible to um to the to the lines, and it's a dark area too, so people weren't really gonna see that. Like, over here also, there's a slight gap in the lines. If you just want to fix those, or fix that. But, um... Like, random corner over here, you can just fix that if you need. Random corner over here, you fix that. Um, so yeah, just go over your outline and vector and make sure that it, there's no random corners and stuff. Now, if we make the image invisible, you could see... That looks pretty good, like, pretty good for now, but we still need some inline detail. We can't only have outline. Now, one thing that looks really weird is the other leg is right here, and there's no line defining this leg. That's easy fix. You just go back to make the image visible. And go here to the path that has that mess. Um, I should have done this earlier, but you can just go here and position to the right. And then we have to make a separate path with the pencil to define the leg. But you can't just do that messy. You have to make sure it's good. And then we also have to go direct selection and shorten this down so that the line isn't just coming out weirdly. Just make it joined with the other one, but not like actually joined because you it may not give you the option. So. And you just make it as close as possible to look like it's all good. And you can, what you can do now is we can go into the path, this weird blob. It's this weird blob over here. It's like, this is weird. All right, so you can see it's because of a random corner. Again, you need to fix these if you have them. You can delete certain points so that, um, so that they're not, like, see like that. You can join those back together because they're just that and um just try not to make it as obvious that it's like a mess up or something if it is one so um yeah just go over your thing and fix it over make sure it's all right and looks good at and close to good as possible just so that you can't if anyone sees the work it's like they can't just easily point out oh you missed this <laughs> So yeah, guys, now as you see, it looks like the other leg is separate from this one. If we make the image invisible, now you can see around the vector that this leg over here is actually a separate object and is behind the other leg, if you would, the other front leg, if you understand. Now, next we need to do inline details, but before we do that, all you have to do, very quick and simple, select everything over here. Go to this panel that says object. Uh, this one with the transform around this circle thingy. And then press group. Now, we are going to call this group inside of layer 2 outline. So if we just go here and select this and rename group to outline. Now, this is going to be important because our outline is going to be different than our inline elements. Um, so we'll just rename layer 2 to vector, because that's what the vector is. And layer 1 we'll rename to image. We should have done this earlier, but I didn't think of it. <laughs> but now we have both of those. Now what we are doing is now we need to make a new path for the inline stuff. So we have to make the image visible again. Okay. And now what we have to do 
is do some inline detail, but there's some mistake that I just realized I did with outline. We have to go back to outline, and as you can see, at this path over here, we have this small mistake where this leg is just the line goes around that leg, and there you see that the body is actually you need to see that the body is actually a little separate from the leg. So we just simply go to pencil and drag a line over slanted from there to there from this point to that point if you get it from here to here and now as you can see if we make the image invisible it doesn't really look good so i actually would just delete that if i were you um you can just keep it like that for now with our inline with our inline inline elements we can make that better anyway so we just deselect everything and now we go and make our inline stuff. So first thing, make the image visible. First thing I want, I always like, is to make to make the eyes. Now with pencil, you can make this non-stroke anymore. Um, so we can just make this have a fill for the eye. If we make an image invisible, that looks bad. But with direct selection, we can make this look better. So if we just um, adjust these, you can delete some points, join them back. And make them curve. Alright, so that was a little unnecessary, but I'm just doing it because it needs it actually needed to be done. So it wasn't unnecessary. Um I'm gonna speed up this process so you don't get bored. Alright guys, so as you can see, we have a big eye, it's kind of big, so we can just scale it down, uh, using the scale transform tools or whatever, and now if you go back to image, you can see, you can just align the eye up, and actually with the image visible, it looks like the triceratops has no eye, it's like possessed or something, but without the image visible, you can see that that looks good, for a vector at least, um, you can see from far away, it kind of looks like there's a jagged part of the eye. To simply fix this, you get a direct selection, and it means that some stuff, some curves, are overlapping improperly. So there shouldn't be in, uh, in, they shouldn't be overlapping at all. So you just need to fix that by curving it up, going here, make sure it's perfectly right. Don't don't always go for like perfect for perfection or whatever, if you're a beginner or something. I'm just doing this because I know how it should be done, and it should be done at least try and make it good to your likings, because your liking will be different than mine. So, you could also do this vector in any color you want, but also, you can just do it in black and then select everything, go to the properties panel, and change the color of everything if you just, if you dislike it. Now you could also change the fill because you can see it's like a red outline above the eye or on the eye. So just double tap using the shortcuts to undo that. Vectors are usually in black and then later colored or filled in. Now, anyways, you can see we have it looks red still to the thing. So anyway. Up here, you can see from far away that it looks like it's overlapping or something. I'm just gonna fix this. Um, by the way, double tap is to make it a curve versus a corner and vice versa. Anyway, guys, now what we need to do is um, go to our pencil tool, and if we, if we make the image visible, like creepy triceratops. Now we have to make basically the inlines, such as oh, and I forgot to make the pencil stroke, so we'll go back to that. Um, so yeah, we go and make our inline elements as far as the mouth goes and stuff. Um, and you can see now that it looks actually kind of ugly if we make the image. Uh, invisible it looks pretty ugly right now 
So, first thing you need to do is convert the corner to a curve, double tap to do that, and with this the random corner, we just have to curve that out, and go back here, this, that, and it seems like a lot, but it's actually not. Um, if you're a beginner, please watch those tutorials I have made of how to use Adobe Illustrator on the iPad, because this can really help, especially if you are a beginner and never watch this kind of stuff. Or at least are not have never done this kind of stuff and want to do it. So make sure you go check that out. Make sure to like and subscribe. The video is not over. I'm just saying that. Just for a quick reminder to do all that stuff. Alright, as you can see it looks better, but it still looks weird. So what we have to do is go to this triceratops head outline. If we go to the outline thing, you can select that path around the head and directly select it so if we go select uh, the head over here and then direct selection you can see that we should have a gap in the mouth and this is why i did vectors from like the body at first and stuff but this is a simple fix anyway we can go to the pen tool and make a simple pen thing and then we will go to direct selection and delete um one of these and as you can see now, it just looks so bad. Um, it auto selects everything, so simply just uh, deselect uh, everything. Only select one thing. <laughs> All right, so now this looks a little better, but still looks like eh. Um, this is kind of the best I could do as far as this. So like. Just stay with me here. I'm trying to make this better as best I could. All right, so that looks actually a little better. Now, this side of the mouth, or this part of the mouth, simply just go here and curve it in so that it looks better. Um, all right, there. As you can see, it looks like he has an actual mouth, but he has um, a good mouth. That looks, he looks good. So... Now, the thing we need to do with this, though, is we have to, to make the mouth not look so weird, it looks actually kind of weird, uh, we just stretch this in some more so that it looks, it doesn't look like the upper mouth the, is, like, way ahead of the lower mouth. But, it still looks a little bit ahead, but I still love it, um, it looks like the leg is merging with the mouth, so I'm just gonna try and fix that real quick there um so now as you can see this looks pretty pretty good for the most part and just gotta make this path good now i'm just trying to make this good for you guys um don't make it perfect if you're just a beginner i'm just trying to make it good for you guys and show you what you can do um so that you if you need to vectorize something or just want to you can know how to do it and fix these little issues so, yeah, this actually looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Um, so, we made a few more paths and all that stuff. So, if we make the image visible again, the creepy triceratops. Ha, 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 ha. Um, you can see that he has these yellow parts of his crown. Simply just use the pencil tool. And outline or inline those parts or outline those parts of the crown not inline them that doesn't even make sense all right um anyway guys so you know what i meant i'm pretty sure uh make sure to comment down below if anything does not make sense i'm sorry this video is getting really long but we just have to use pencil and once you get good at this vector art and stuff like that, it only takes around, it can take like maybe 10 minutes to do something pretty simple like a dinosaur. Now as a beginner, it may be like, oh my god, this isn't simple, this is complex hard work. I mean, it is hard work, but it's not like, um, it's not like, um, it's like an hour thing an hourly thing to do that takes forever it's actually really simple and once you get the concept it's pretty easy so 
um, don't doubt yourself if you're just a beginner or something. People, you know, get better as they progress, and so, yeah, I just needed to say some pre-encouraging words, encouraging words, yeah. Anyway, guys, this looks pretty dang good, actually. Uh, as you can see, that this looks the head looks pretty detailed, but one thing we need to do also is make the image visible. And as you can see, you can tell in the image that there's two horns coming out of Triceratops' head. We need to do that to our vector art. So, first thing is all you have to do, actually, it's not the first thing, it's all you have to do, it's the first and last thing, is that you outline the first horn that's closest to the camera's view of this Triceratops image. And then you just wanna go to direct selection, get rid of any extra corners. And, um, it's pretty much it for the horn already. That's pretty quick. Um, and if you're trying to follow along with this tutorial, I will not have a link for this image because I actually don't, like, have one. But I actually might make a link for this image for you guys to go to and download because I'm kind and I think you guys should have the right reference images for the work if you're trying to follow along. So I will actually put a link to the image in the description. So, I'm just making it a difference so you can see that there's two horns, and if we make the image invisible, as you can see, now you can see there's two horns. But it just looks like some weird cylinder that has a spike sticking out of his head, so we're gonna go and make that look a little better. Pretty simple. So first, we just need to, um, I first need to go to your vector, deselect everything, make the image invisible. And we need to add a simple line, simple few lines, such as like any that looks like there's any wrinkles or something around those horns. So it doesn't just look like weird cylinders are sticking out of the head. Um, I didn't do this with my original clip art for vector or for vectoring that I showed you earlier in the video that it should look close to, or the image should look close to. So I um, am doing this also just to make sure that you guys understand that um, if that if this doesn't look good to you, then this is how to fix it. Um, other people say it's fine and you don't need to do this, but it's a little extra if you want to, um, just something. <laughs> So, yeah, as you can see, it doesn't look as much like stuff are just sticking out of his head. But, uh, we need to edit this a bit. Just bring this over and convert that. Um. And sometimes you may need to convert things to corners and then cur convert them back to curve if you have an issue, um, and fix it like that. Uh, so that's why you'll see like the curves turning into corners sometimes because I'm double tapping to make them curves and stuff. All right, guys, so that actually looks pretty good. Um, it looks a little weird how the thing ends, how it like just looks like a square is ending right over his eye, but I like it. I mean, it looks a little weird, and I'll just for the sake of that, I'll just move it over. Um, just to make this look a bit better. Yeah, make it look a bit, a bit better. Oh, God, that actually does not. Something's wrong. Oh, God. I did not mean to do that. But, hey, uh, with this stuff, do what you like. Just make sure it's, like, how you want it, because... It's your art, and when it's your art, do whatever you want with it. But in this case, I'm just going to do that. Um, it doesn't look that much different than the cylinder sticking out of his head. But it's kind of the best I could do. So, um, yeah, that's it for the head. Now, I would do a part two on the body for this Triceratops, because the tutorial is getting really long. So, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below if anything didn't make sense. I will make a part two, because... Part one has already been too long for the head and the basic outlines. But before we end the video, we just have to select all the inline paths. Um, and so we'll just select these. 
by one. What we could do is actually just hold up. So we select them. All the inline ones for the crown and stuff. Keep selecting. Uh, I don't know why. Oh, God. Dang it. Um, that's so weird. All right. So I'm just getting all the leaves together. You simply want to group your things so that's more organized. You simply go to object panel, go and group. I'm going to name this inline. Um, and with the extra paths that you have, just select them, like the eye or something, and move them into the group because, um, because if you may need to move them into the group so that if you can't actually select them and just put, and then just put them all in a group at the same time. So, you just want to grab and do that um it may be difficult for some reason because like my stylus it's not letting me select this stuff even with my fingers it's not letting me hold up uh well you just have to hold you just have to tap and hold and like put it somewhere but for some reason it's being very difficult with me but you could also if it really isn't working out for you you could go to the selection this will take a little longer but you'll just have to go to the selection and um see what has not been selected as the end line and go and uh, fix or, or find out exactly what parts were like as you can see these two parts over here that's, dang it doesn't even show them selected what probably because it's a part of the out wait no it's not a part of the outline at all um i don't know but for some reason, I can't select these last things, but that's okay. Um, you could just group them into inline two somehow. I can't select them for some reason. You can only select one. So that's really weird, guys. But anyways, I'm going to end the video here. Make sure you subscribe. And without further ado, let's get on to part two and subscribe like and all that good stuff so you won't miss another tutorial like this oh wait the randomest corner ever bye